But as most of you know, an investigation by Montana Tech into a limited number of student grade and transcript irregularities shows that a former employee made unauthorized transcript changes for 36 former or current students. But I will tell you this, I can confidently say that the incident was isolated, it is well understood, and actions have been taken to correct our systems, and disciplinary action is being uh, taken in accordance with legal counsel, within legal requirements, and by following Montana Tech policy and procedures. So with this, I'm going to invite Vice Chancellor Abbott to come up and talk about some of the timelines that uh, precipitated uh, this incident. Okay. Um, good afternoon. I'd like to thank you all for uh, coming to this event. Many of you have read the press release uh, that Chancellor Blackheader issued uh, probably a month or so ago. And uh, there's an awful lot of rumors, innuendos, uh, that hopefully, uh, after I go through the timeline of events, uh, the information that I'll share with you uh, might help to mitigate some of those uh, misinformation or disinformation pieces that are currently floating around. When I'm done talking about the timeline of events, uh, I'm gonna ask Kathy Williams to come up and talk about some of the uh, policies and procedures that uh, her office and the campus has implemented to ensure that something like this will never happen again. So. Hopefully this will, again, give you more information than uh, was released in the press release. The tipping point for this situation occurred on October 25th, 2011. And as you will hear as the timeline unfolds, it was a, a, a circumstance of the campus became aware of one issue and when we investigated that issue, we became aware of another issue, and we investigated that issue, et cetera, et cetera. But again, the, the tipping point, late October 2011, a student goes to Paul Beatty's office who had attended uh, an out-of-state campus with another fellow student who transferred, both students transferred to Montana Tech. They took the same courses, same curriculum. One of the students uh, was awarded 52 transfer credits. The other student was awarded 32 transfer credits. So of course, the 32 transfer credit student wants to know why did I get 32 and why did the other student get 52? We investigated the uh, transfer credits that were awarded and it became very apparent that the 52 transfer credit student was accorded deferential differential treatment. Uh, that student had received transfer credit for some uh, courses that they had failed at the original institution. So uh, Tony Campo investigated and determined that the 52 credit student had received differential treatment. So this is the point at which we became aware of a tra transfer credit issue. Starting in November, Kathy Williams runs an audit of transfer credits awarded. While doing this, she found an instance of a transcript that contained a W that had been changed to a B. Ten transcripts were printed, and then the B was changed back to a W. So here's the point at which we became aware of possible unauthorized transcript changes. So audits continued in this area. Now these audits that I refer to, most everything that occurs in enrollment services, audits can be run that identify the date, the time, and the individual that made any changes to a transcript. In December, uh, two faculty make it aware that they witnessed a student graduate in the May graduation ceremony that had failed at least one class in their department that, it that was a required class. And so the faculty just came forward and asked, 
was there a course substitution or had they uh, taken the class remotely and had it transferred in? We pulled up the student's record and uh, at that point we became aware of grades being changed on a transcript. At this point, we informed the University of Montana Legal Council of what was going on, uh, received some advice from the UM attorney, and continued to proceed. We interviewed the employee. The employee admitted to changing grades beginning in the spring semester of 2011. So April, to be more specific, of 2011. At that point, we ran an audit for all grade changes for all students from the fall semester of 2008 to the fall semester of 2011. So uh, an audit for that three-year time period. While doing that audit, we found instances of grades being deleted from transcripts. A large number of W's were deleted from a transcript. And surprisingly enough, probably a majority of grades that were deleted from a transcript were courses in which a student had passed, retaken the class, and got a higher grade. So a student, for example, would get a C plus, retake the class and get a B plus. The C plus was deleted from their transcript. So an audit was run for all courses that had been removed from a transcript. On December 16th, many of you in this room received an email from me saying that enrollment services personnel may be contacting you inquiring about grade changes. And the way the process unfolded, grades get changed all the time. Uh, Students on a borderline goes to a faculty member and says, can I do some extra credit to improve my grade? Things like that. So this three-year time period that we ran the, all of the grade changes, it generated a report about this thick. Enrollment services personnel went through every single grade change in this thick of a document to make sure that there was supporting documentation for that grade change namely a grade change form. So this many data points shrunk to this many data points. So there were this many students who had grade changes that did not have the appropriate grade change information. As many of you are probably aware, sometimes faculty do not use the appropriate form to approve a grade change. Sometimes it's done via email, sometimes it's done via phone call. So enrollment services contacted each faculty member for a grade change that did not have documented paperwork. So this list shrunk to this list. And so it's this small number of grade changes that I'm talking about. While doing that, on December 19th, we found an instance of a grade being posted to a transcript in a course that the student had never been enrolled in. I call these post-registrations. So, for example, in the fall semester of 2008, students had transcripts changed for the fall semester of 2010. So students were added to a course in the fall semester of 2010 and given a grade all on the same day. So again, an audit was run to identify all of these post-registration courses. As I mentioned, we had run all these audits for a three-year time period, the 2008 to 2011 time period, to make sure that we were aware of all of these changes. We ran all those audits again for the 2005 to 2008 time period. 
There were no changes, inappropriate changes for that three year time period. So we are very, very confident that we have caught all of the inappropriate changes. During the month of January, the Academic Standards Committee began reviewing each student on a case-by-case -case basis. The range of infractions are from a student who had one W removed to the other end of the spectrum, one student had 16 grade changes, four courses removed, and six courses added to their transcript. So that's the spectrum of, of what we're dealing with. The students have been advised that they will be permanently dismissed from the campus and are currently being offered due process and they can appeal the recommendation in writing. Eight of the 36 students have graduated. The Academic Standards Committee has recommended that a large number of, a certain number of those students have their, trend, their uh, degrees revoked for Montana Tech. So that's, that's where we're at. Uh, a very unfortunate incident. It's a, uh, uh, casts a unfavorable light on the institution. Uh, everybody in this room has worked extremely hard to support and perpetuate the reputation that Montana Tech currently has. Uh, we'll get through it. Uh, the campus has been commended by uh, the governor's office, the commissioner of higher education, uh, in terms of how we handled this whole thing. Once we got to a point where we knew uh, we could document the inappropriate things that occurred, uh, we became public with that information. We did not try to hide it. There was a question as to why did the press release go out on a Friday? Well, it went out on a Friday because it was ready to go on a Friday. So again, the, the campus is not has not uh, tried to hide any of this that uh, has occurred. 